Saturday. Now, you might not believe it if you ventured outside today, but we are finally emerging from a very long, cold winter. And that is especially good news for the birds in our gardens. The RSPB has just published the results of its annual Big Garden Bird Watch. And it's been a particularly hard winter for the smaller birds, apparently. Yeah, Claire McGlasson has joined some keen bird watchers in a garden in St Neots in Cambridgeshire tonight. Claire, some shocking statistics you've got to tell us here. Yes, Becky, we're enjoying uh, the spring showers this evening, but I'm sure you won't have forgotten. Think back a few months ago and you'll remember we're in the middle of the worst British winter for 30 years. It was cold, it was miserable, and at times it was fairly inconvenient. But for the small birds that live in our garden, the effect was devastating. The RSPB, as you say, has released the figures for this year's Big Garden Bird Watch, and the results confirm the worst fears of bird watchers that thousands of songbirds were wiped out by winter. These are the survivors, the ones who've seen it through a very long and very cold winter. But according to the RSPB's Birdwatch survey, more than three quarters of some species weren't so lucky. At the charity's headquarters in Sandy in Bedfordshire today, an announcement about the true cost of the cold. As temperatures here dropped to minus nine, the smallest were hit hardest. Small-bodied birds lose heat very quickly and they basically have to eat continuously just to stay alive. So if food is covered in snow or ice, basically it's, it's written off. There are no natural food supplies for them, which is where we come in. They're hungry, they're desperate, so they come to our gardens for our help and we can be the difference between life and death. This year, more than half a million people took part in the survey on a single day in January, recording the birds they spotted in their garden over one hour. Sightings of small species dropped dramatically compared to the previous year's mild winter. Only a quarter of the number of goldcrests were recorded. The long-term trends were also bleak. Numbers of the most commonly seen bird, the house sparrow, have fallen by 62% in 30 years. But this year's cold weather meant hungry countryside birds like the field fair came to our gardens in search of food. Unusual species like the red wing putting in a rare appearance, driven by desperation. Okay, let's, come on, let's go feed the birds in the garden. The Bashford family from St Neots in Cambridgeshire took part in the survey. Dad Richard works for the RSPB and he's keen to bring his work home. It's the small birds like uh, wren that have had a really bad time over the winter and it just highlights what good we can do in our gardens. We feed the birds nuts and seeds and also apples. We'll have to wait until next year's survey to learn whether the populations have managed to recover. In the meantime, the RSPB is urging people to make their garden guests welcome. A little food and water really can mean the difference between life and death. Claire McGlasson, Anglian News, Sandy in Bedfordshire. Looks like the Bashford birds are very well fed. Absolutely. And if you want to find out which birds are faring best in your area, just log on to our website at itv.com slash anglia. We've got a county-by-county county breakdown. and There's some interesting variations yeah, there. there. Really are. Now, you could say our next item is pure magic. Matthew Garrett, a magician from Bedford, has conjured up a prestigious award in a nationwide competition. Matthew's been honoured by the Magic Circle for coming up with a new version of an old trick. They were so impressed with his stunning sleight of hand they gave him the magic circles close up of the musician musician magician, magician. close up magician of the year award might be a musician as well but i doubt it <laughs> neil bradford has been to see him in action matthew garrett is a master in the art of deception guaranteed to back <laughs> this is my wedding ring just watch really close happens on one happens on two and um yeah just by three, it goes right the way through. The quickness of the hand deceives the eye. There's definitely nothing on my finger. The ring's definitely attached on there. Just watch. Marks, set, go. And it jumps back. 
brilliant, very good. Couldn't see any breaks. Of, I examined it all. It was solid. It was really, really clever. Would you like to do us a favour? Just reach in, take a card out. Doesn't matter if I see it. In fact, it gives me a head start. Do us a favour, write your name on the card. It could be your name, picture, pin number. Well, it's worth a try, isn't it? Anything that you like, big and bold, across the face of that card. Perfect. card's going to go into the pack, and it goes in... No, into the middle somewhere. Where would you say it went? Towards the top, the middle, or the bottom of the pack? The middle. I always cheat. Just watch. A little flick of the fingers like that, and it jumps back to the top. Now, that's your card. It's got the ink on there, right? They're pretty cool. I wish I could do them. Hold your hands out one last time. If I take the cards, it's a little cloud of smoke. The cards turn invisible. There's my money back on the cards. And this is the best bit, because all I'm left with would be five cards. Nothing up the sleeve. There's card number one. There's card number two. I've got three cards left to go, of course. One of the cards just up there. Another one just around the back of your ear. And the last one always gets stuck just around there like that. And we really should be left with all five. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I was watching his sleeve to see if anything came come out. But no, very good. Perfect. Just don't lose it. <laughs> it looks expensive. It is expensive. Okay. Don't take your eyes off then in that case. One, two. Oh, well done. And that's your ring joined, right? Yeah. Just watch that. Do that again. <laughs> Definitely joined. I hope he can, I've already been coming off. It's already come out. Melts right the way through. You better take that back in one piece. <laughs> Hold your hand up. His close up tricks are not only popular in his hometown of Bedford. Come on, watch a trick. I bet I could teach you a few too. I bet you could as well. <laughs> They've just won him a prestigious prize from the magic circle. Like that, and it just melts away. The award that I've won is for close up magic. So rather than be for stage magic, it's where you get to see the magic very, very close, and people are watching, scrutinising to see how the tricks are done. And, and we've seen your magic firsthand today in Bedford. I mean, the reaction is, is quite astonishing sometimes, isn't it? I think that's a lot of the reasons that people enjoy magic. It's the fun, not only for the spectators, but the fun for myself as a performer. When you get to see people's reactions, the smiles, that, that's what it's all about. The last thing to do is give a little flick like that, just jumps back to my finger over there, and that's the end of the trick. <laughs> he may leave his audience baffled and confused, but they're certainly under no illusion as to why he's an award winner. That's where the card is around there. Thank you very much. Neil Bradford, Anglia News, Bedford. <laughs> That's very impressive, but would you give that man your ring? Perhaps not. No. <laughs> Absolutely incredible stuff. Anyway, finally tonight we follow that sleight of hand with some pictures of a cat that might just make you look twice. See if you can spot something just a little bit odd here. Dear, here's Puddy, a nine-year-old tabby at the Blue Cross Rehoming Centre in Cambridge. Seen nothing strange yet? Let's take a closer look. There you go. Puddy has six toes on each paw. Really? P Puddy's sister Baby is a bit more camera shy, but also has 24 toes, six on each foot. Cats normally have five toes on their front paws and four on the back. Might seem a little strange, but in the past, this cat would have been a prized possession. It was thought in the past, uh, particularly by sailors, that they were lucky because they had better balance. And so they used to be prized as ship's cats and as mascots and lucky cats and, of course, ratters to keep the vermin down on the sailing ships. But uh, really, it doesn't affect them at all, and uh, uh, they get around quite happily with the extra toes on. So 24 toes, I wonder if that means any more lives. <laughs> Ten lives? Everyone at home is going to be checking their cat's toes now. <laughs> now, what to expect on the national news in a comments. So it's time for us now to carry out our vanishing act, but <laughs> you'll be making a reappearance later. I will be. I'll see you at half past ten, maybe. <laughs> see you tomorrow, us. if not. Bye-bye. <laughs>